All right, I want to welcome everybody to today's webinar on how to share with religious people. You know, we have an objective today, goal today in today's webinar is to show you just how to start a winsome conversation that leads toward the gospel, how to manage that conversation well, and then how to transition uh, that conversation to a gospel presentation. Uh, we have a lot of content to cover, and so I want to jump right into it. Thank you all for, for joining us today. The first thing I want to talk about is three reasons that we can look forward to talking with people from another religion or people with other religious convictions. And I'm just going to put all three of these uh, right up here on the screen. These are these are important to think about because they're things that that we can overlook, especially when it comes to reaching somebody from another religion. The one is they're already interested in discussing spiritual things. This is often uh, an area that people struggle with. Is how do I transition to talk about spiritual things? Well, if they already have another re religious belief or another religious conviction, then you already know they're interested in spiritual things. And so it makes it that much easier to have that kind of discussion. Secondly, most are open to other views about God. Now, I've seen this in my own experience many times over, and I've heard this from many others who have lots of experience in sharing with people from other religions, that it doesn't necessarily mean that they're open to believing another view about God, but they're almost always open to hearing about another view about God, especially if you are willing to hear what they think about, about who God is. Uh, as well. And when you do that, they're they're almost always open to hearing about your views. And we'll talk about that a little bit later uh, in today's content. And then lastly, and I think this is one of the most important, is they have a positive view of Jesus. I put the word likely there, but uh, but I've never seen an instance to where they don't already have a positive view of Jesus. So regardless of what religious worldview, uh, the, the person that you're talking to, whatever worldview they have, they, at the very least, would hold that Jesus is a good person, or maybe they think he's a good moral teacher. Maybe they would hold that he's a prophet, like in Islam. Uh, maybe they even elevate him to the level of a god, like in Mormonism or Jehovah's Witnesses. Uh, but whatever it is, they already have a view that he's good. You are now just coming in with the opportunity to show them that he's more than good. He's actually God. Like you have underestimated who Jesus actually is, but never are you going to have to try to convince somebody that Jesus is actually a, a good figure in history. These are three critical things to think about because they cover kind of the three areas that people get most concerned about when they think about sharing the gospel. How do I transition to spiritual things? And how do I talk about God in general? And how do I lead the conversation with, uh, about Jesus? And when it comes to talking to somebody who has a separate religious conviction than yours as a Christian, you already know that the person you're talking to has the willingness to talk about these things and has a, a positive view about God, a positive view about Jesus, which makes it so much easier to step into these kinds of conversations. And here's why that's important. When we look forward to something, we feel comfortable. And when we feel comfortable, we feel confident. When someone else sees that confidence in you, they begin to feel comfortable while you're talking to them. They, they begin to think, hey, this person has something that they really want to share with me. Now, this has nothing to do with, with the hesitation and the nervousness that comes with sharing the gospel that everybody feels when, they come to sharing, when it comes to sharing the gospel. Everybody has that moment of tension and nervousness. That has nothing to do with that. But when you have this comfortability about you, it does just an incredible amount of, of work for you when it comes to talking with somebody from another religion. So I just wanted to provide that to begin with uh, because we should look forward to engaging with somebody who has a different religious worldview or different religious convictions or belongs to a completely different religion altogether for these three reasons and more could probably be said. But let's talk about how to start the conversation with somebody uh, who has a separate religious conviction or from a different religion, religious worldview. Uh, now, when I say start the conversation, I'm not talking about um, how to start talking about the weather or how to start talking about a sports team or how to start talking about general things about how's work going. Uh, we are experts. Um, uh, <laughs> we are experts in general at small talk. And so we don't we don't need to talk about how, how to do that. What I'm talking about is 
how to start a conversation that's going to get you on a on a spiritual track quickly knowing the three things that we just talked about that you know you're talking to somebody that's already interested in spiritual things you don't have to wait a long time to kind of jump into that spiritual topic you notice there's a phrase there it says be curious not combative it's one of my favorite phrases and it's not just a phrase that word curious is i think it's a powerful word and i'll talk about that when we get to the end of this slide and you'll see it that actual word in each of the things that we'll, we'll talk about and let's just jump into this first one here imagine somebody asking you this question imagine somebody asking you i know religion can sometimes be a sticky topic but i'm very curious about what drew you to your religious beliefs would you mind sharing that could you imagine how you'd feel if somebody asked you that? You'd just be like, oh my goodness, what a gift from God. <laughs> somebody actually wants to hear what I believe about who God is and who Jesus is. I'd love to share with you. I don't feel like you're trying to attack me. I don't feel like you're trying to condemn me. I don't feel like you're trying to mock me or make fun of me. It sounds like you're genuinely, genuinely interested in what I have to share about what I believe. And friend, this is exactly how someone is going to feel when you ask them the same question they're going to feel like you have a genuine concern for what they believe and that you're interested in hearing what they would have to share. You're not sounding like you want to judge or condemn or make fun of or mock. You just want, want them to share and you have a posture of listening and, and that changes everything. I, I have another example here for if, if you know somebody, uh, if you've known somebody for a few, several years, could be 10, 20 years, but you've never really brought up this topic before. It, it can be kind of tough because it's it's almost like, hey, I know that you know I'm a Christian and I know that you are not and we've never really brought this up before based on whatever your religious belief is. If you ask a question like this, it can do amazing things for you. Yeah, you know, I've always been curious about your beliefs on God and heaven, but I've been hesitant to ask because I know it can be a sensitive issue. Would you mind sharing? I'd love to listen. Again, could you imagine somebody asking you this question? It would, it, would, it would feel like, yeah, of course, I would love to share with you. And that's how they're going to feel as well. There's almost a little bit of a built-in apology here. Like, hey, I realize that I've known you for a long time. And, and you and I both know we have different religious beliefs. And I've been hesitant to ask about it. But I'd I want to ask about it now. And here's, here's what I want to do. I just want to listen. And again, it's very disarming. And that's, that's a, one of the pow powerful elements of the word curious. Again, do you mind if I ask what you believe about God? I'm genuinely curious. Would you share a little bit about how you view him? This could be a question you ask with somebody that you've known for a while. This is the kind of question I, I would ask somebody if I saw you know, a couple guys on a bike and you know, clearly they're Mormons going from door to door and they happen to drive by me or you know, try to ride, ride past me instead of crossing the street and picking up my pace, I would want to engage them a little bit and just say, hey, can you tell me a little bit about what you believe about God? I'm I'm genuinely curious. Would you mind sharing what you believe about him? Now, I already know it's not going to be what I believe, but I want them to know. I just want to hear what you have to say. I have some things I want to say as well, but I'm going to let you kind of share a little bit about what you think. So if you're the kind of person that likes to take pictures of screens, um, this would be a great time. You know, everyone's going to get a recording of this webinar sent to the email that you registered with on Friday. But this is a great screen to take a picture of. And just think of what are some other questions that I could ask that maybe use this word curious. Again, it's a powerful word because it's very disarming. It's a word that carries no sense of I'm, I'm ready to condemn you or I'm, I'm pulling you into a trap or I'm ready to start mocking you or making fun of you. It's, hey, I'm genuinely curious. Um, but you can think of some other questions to ask that are relevant to the religious family member, coworker, friend, somebody in your peer group that you know. So th think about that. Now, when I ask them this question, when I ask them this question, now as they begin to answer, what do I do? Well, what I do is I stay engaged with active listening. Now, if you've ever attended a Toastmasters um, set of classes or ever attended something on public speaking or conversationalism, then you've heard of active listening. But it's so important, especially in today's volatile culture where it seems like nobody really cares about anybody, to engage in these active listening tactics. You know, the first one I think is really important is to ensure open body language. The last thing you want to do is ask somebody this very kind-hearted question that says, hey, I'd love for you to share what you believe. I'm, I really authentically just want to hear 
uh, what you think. And then all of a sudden you cross your arms over your chest and you look at them with furrowed brows and you start shaking your head back and forth as they're talking. Clearly, you're dissatisfied with what they're telling you and you're, and everything about your body language is saying, I disagree and I can't wait to tell you all the reasons why you're wrong. That person is going to trail off and cut what they were going to say short and try to find the quickest way out of that conversation. But if you have that open body language where your hands are just kind of loosely hanging, you have a neutral expression on your face, you're, uh, you ha you, you're clearly engaged with them, your, sh your shoulders are squared to them, and maybe and you're making eye contact. And I, I do want to talk about that for a little bit. Let's, let's uh, camp out on eye contact for a second because I hear about that a lot. Uh, you know, always make eye contact with the person that you're talking to, you know, uh, for the entire time you're talking to them. And that can be great for some people. I love to say, you know, hey, if they're comfortable with it, some people, some of you may be on this uh, webinar today are not comfortable with constant eye contact the entire time you're talking to somebody. I tend, I, I'm sometimes one of those people, depending on the conversation, and I'm not averting my gaze from you because uh, I'm unsure of what I think or unsure of what I believe or wavering on my thoughts. I'm, I'm averting my gaze because I feel like you're staring into my soul. <laughs> and it bothers me a little bit. It, it doesn't it doesn't make me uncomfortable because I, I think there's a better point that you're making. I just I, I don't really like it that much, um, depending on the topic. But uh, my wife sometimes is blown away uh, whenever whenever we talk about, you know, a couple guys can be on a pond and, and have some fishing lures in the water and can have these deep and meaningful conversations uh, with their backs to one another or how we can be watching a football game or a baseball game and turn down the volume a little bit and have this just very uh, this very deep conversation where some amazing heart work is happening, but we're not really making a lot of eye contact. So I just say all that to say, you know, when somebody, you can tell when somebody's not comfortable with it. Uh, and, and so just be careful that you're not um, just staring them down as opposed to just really trying to engage with them. Uh, so that's the only point I wanna make there. Um, and we want to seek understanding by asking questions about key points of, of, of information. So this is clarifying questions for those who have been in, in some of these um, uh, classes before. Asking, asking clarifying questions. Uh, so when someone's talking to you, uh, you have the opportunity to say something like, hey, you mentioned that uh, you, you have this, this belief about God that no religion really adheres to, but you believe in God in, in your own way. Can you expand on that? I'm not sure I understand. That's a great question to ask when when somebody you know claims a certain belief about God, and it, and it's something that you're going to run into a lot um, when you're talking to somebody who has other religious beliefs, even if they claim to be from a certain religion. As you begin asking them about what they believe about God, they often kind of start pulling things from different a little bit of a different religion here, and I like what this religion says about God, and, and what this religion says about God, and what this religion says about salvation, and they kind of mix it all up. And so asking those clarifying questions can be really helpful as, as you're going through a conversation. Another example is, you know, I want to make sure I understand um, when you say the, you know, some, uh, I don't know, the reason um, that, that you're not interested in Christianity as a religion is because you think the Bible is full of so many errors. Um, you know, how'd you come to believe that was true? Or you could ask something like, could you give me a couple of examples of a couple of things that you think are errors and, uh, you know, why they bother you? These are often questions that people don't generally get asked. They've been spending a lot of time going around and telling other people things like, oh, the Bible's full of a bunch of errors. And then they get into arguments, but rarely do they, do they say, hey, you know, what ones bother you the most? I'd love to hear your thoughts on that. Most of the time, they're not going to have anything to say. Um, they're going to want to change the subject really quickly. And, and that's fine. It's fine for that to be that appropriate tension to where you can continue the conversation toward uh, the gospel. The biggest part of this is to express thankfulness to them for sharing. Um, this is critical. You know, sometimes when people share with you, it doesn't seem like they're sharing anything deep or, or really, really meaningful. Sometimes it'll seem like some basic things about God. But to them, it's a really big deal. And so when you ask them this very kind-hearted question of, of, hey, would you mind um, sharing a little bit about what you believe? I'm just curious. And I've always wanted to ask. I just want to listen. And then you're staying engaged using kind of some of these basic principles. 
And then you take that next step to thank them and just say something like, hey, thank you for sharing. I, I really appreciate you being vulnerable and sharing that with me. I know sometimes that's not easy. It's a big deal. And you want to make sure that you're appreciative for their openness. But here's the major thing. We are conditioned and in just society in general that when you are opening up with this politeness and you're giving somebody the opportunity to share a little bit about what they think and you're showing, you're asking a very disarming question and then you're listening, you're staying engaged, authentically engaged with what they're sharing. It is built in that it's your turn that you have earned credit during this part of the conversation that, hey, I've listened to what you have to say. It's clear that I don't have this specific agenda, but now I'd like to share something with you. And it's a natural turn. It's not a forced turn. You're not you know, grabbing them by the shoulder or turning them around, that kind of thing. It's not a shocking turn. It feels very natural. And it's how we are in conversations all the time. And sharing the gospel shouldn't feel any different. It's just a conversation, but it's about the most important thing ever. So that leads to how do I transition to the gospel? And the most important thing we can do is ask pointed questions. So these questions vary depending on how that person answered that first question you asked. But, but we'll, give a, we'll give a few examples and then we'll talk about that in a little bit more detail. So first of all, I'd say, you know, the Bible describes God in a very unique way. Would you mind if I shared? This is a great question to ask. If somebody has began begins to describe their view of God and they they begin to give a very different definition of how the Bible describes God, and you can say, hey, you know, I, I hear what you're saying. It seems like you have a, a very um, distinct view of God, but you know, the Bible describes God in a very unique way. Could I could I share with you what it what it teaches? And again, you've built up that credit. Everything is telling that person to say, well, yeah, sure, you've listened to me. Now, I, I, you know, I, I feel like I, I should listen to you as well. Another example, this is, this, is, this is great for if someone begins talking about um, how they think that uh, there's a lot of work that they feel like they need to do to, do to appease God. Uh, and when, when you're asking somebody's belief about God and how to get to heaven and they, they start talking about, Basically, oh, I'm just trying to do the best I can, and I just think, you know, God is willing to accept me if if I if I am a good father or a good mother or I'm a good friend, and I I I don't I don't steal a bunch of things, and and if I do all these things right, He's going to let me in. But it's clear that they're not certain, and maybe you're even able to ask that question of of it seems like you know you're lacking certainty that you're going to go to heaven. Did I get that right? And when they say, well, yeah, I mean, I don't think anybody can be certain. And you get a chance to ask this pointed question of, you know, I, I'm actually certain that I'm going to be with God forever uh, when I close my eyes for the last time on this earth. Can I share with you how I know that from the that I know that from what the Bible teaches? So obviously, this is very helpful for someone who has more of a Catholic upbringing, where they've just been taught you have to keep on working. And, and of course, every religion outside of Christianity is a works-based religion. You have to do a certain amount of things to be pleasing enough to God for him to let you into his kingdom. Only Christianity says that it is by grace you are saved through faith, so that not by works, so that nobody can boast. We cannot bribe God with our good works. And I, I actually like to use that phrase sometimes because it's kind of a shocking phrase. So feel free to use that. I've, I've actually found that very helpful recently when I was sharing the gospel with somebody that, um, hey, man, you're trying to bribe God with your good works. It's not going to work. And here's why. You know, could I share with you how the Bible describes God and his love for us? I think you'd be surprised how many times someone from another uh, religious conviction describes God as uh, a little bit cruel, uh, that he's there to judge and he's there to condemn and he's there watching us like a hawk, almost waiting for us to make a mistake. And so they're just trying to do everything they can not to make th those mistakes. And so this can be a great question to basically say, hey, can I share with you how the Bible describes God and his love for us? Like, I hear you talking about a lot of, of, of uh, the judgment side of God, but can I talk to you about his love? And again, because that you've allowed them to share a little bit with you and what they think, they're going to be very willing to hear um, what it is that you would have to share about God's love. And they're going to be interested because who wants, who doesn't want to hear about God's love, who thinks that God is watching every single move that they're making with a desired interest in condemning them? 
but you get the chance to tell them actually God desires a relationship with you and he's pursuing you and he's, he has this gift open and waiting for you. I mean, what a great opportunity you have to lead toward that conversation with just a pointed question. The big thing here is to make the Bible the authority. Uh, when sharing about God, it's important to explain how the Bible is speaking about everyone as, as well. This is not your personal opinion or something that's true for you. That's why we want to make make sure that we're making the Bible our authority. This is another great example. If you're the kind of person that likes to take pictures with your smartphone of screens, this is a great example. Take a picture of this, grab a piece of notebook paper later this afternoon or into this weekend, and think of several other questions that you could ask with people that you know that make the Bible the authority that could point them in toward the gospel in a, in a, in a conversation. There's many others that, that you could ask, but the big thing here is to make the Bible the authority. You're not the authority. You're not trying to make yourself the authority. You're trying to make the Bible the authority on, because uh, the Bible is what has the gospel. And so you want to make the Bible the authority. So lastly, we want to talk about presenting the gospel. Now, I'm not going to go through a full gospel presentation here, but what I what I do want to tell you is, is just a couple things that I think are important to know. Yeah. First, methods are great. Uh, we love methods. If you talk to, to Dr. Larry Moyer, he'll tell you um, that that uh, everybody should have a method. I agree with that. I agree everybody should have a method. Uh, at Avantel, we have the bad news, good news method. I, I think that's an incredible method that clearly explains the gospel very succinctly with, with wonderful and clear illustrations that highlight the points that you're making about each section of scripture. Ties directly to the Bible every single time and, and gives a clear illustration clear illustration so someone can actually see what you're saying. Um, if you're interested in that method, uh, there's a QR code right there. Um, you can also just go to avantel.org and click store. A uh, pack of 25 is, is about $5 with tax. Um, but you can use this to hand out to others, which is great. Um, you can use this just to memorize. Um, and this, this is what I highly recommend. However you're going to use um, these tracks, me memorize the method that you that that you want to use Mem memorize it and we'll talk about why in a second but i highly recommend that if you don't have a method this is a great method to go with and i'll say that just because i work for avantel i used this method long before i began working here when i did prison ministry for over a decade um, they had their own tracks and their own things they like to use and i thought they were great but this is the method that i would use with prisoners because it was so clear and helpful to them it's not the only method out there. In fact, it's not the only method that we have. We also have a method that we use with kids and with some other people. Um, it's not always for kids. Uh, it's a very colorful um, uh, pamphlet that opens up into a cross. And so it turns into a little bit of a display. It doesn't start with the bad news. It starts with God's love for us. Um, and so again, if you have this method memorized, then you can uh, use this track if you want or this pamphlet. Uh, and I'll open this up into, into a cross as you're talking to somebody. But if you have it memorized, you can just walk through the points as you're talking to somebody as well. And then you can hand this to them afterward and say, hey, as a reminder, take a look at this. And that's that's really how we intend tracks to be used. Tracks are not meant to be used. And I don't want to step on any toes here, but we at Avantel, and, and Dr. Moyer will affirm this with me, we at Avantel do not recommend taping tracks to doors, sticking them on windshields, giving them to people and running away. Um, Tracks are really meant to follow up after you've shared with somebody or to be used as a conversation guide. Let me share this with you. Let me walk you through this so you can ask me any questions you may have. Or let me share with you what I believe is true about the Bible using the information that's in this track. And then I'll hand it to you so you can go and think about it later if this isn't a decision that you feel like you're ready to make right now. That's how these are intended to be used. But it's not just this, not just these tracks. There's, there's others. And there's other methods. There's there's methods that don't use tracks at all. It's just memorizing. You know, there's acronyms that they use with the words gospel or Bible. Um, if if you like the five fingers approach of, of evangelism explosion or evangel cube or the evangel cards, uh, if you like to use the four spiritual laws to share to share the gospel, whatever method that you feel comfortable with using that clearly explains the gospel, use that method. This isn't about a Vantel or a Vantel's method for sharing the gospel. Whatever method that you use, or, or if you guys use the, the three circles as, as you go you know, door to door or engage other people, great. If you like to draw, draw the cross on a napkin, fantastic. But, but what I love to say is memorize 
the method that you're using so that you don't need the napkin every time. You don't need the paper to draw the three circles every time. You don't need the tract in your pocket. You can walk through this. And here's why. Here's why it's absolutely critical. Because then you can share what you know. Now that I'm talking to somebody and they begin answering the questions that I've asked in a winsome way, and they begin telling me exactly where they are with God, I can answer based on where they are with God. Case in point, I was talking to a person last week in a Walmart parking lot, and we got on the conversation of God, and it was very clear that he understood who God is as far as what the Bible teaches, and he understood what sin is, and he understood the consequence of sin is death. What he was struggling with, and his main point of struggle was that he was convinced that there was some amount of work that he had to do in addition to the sacrifice of Christ. To get to heaven. And he was just convinced, I got to be a good father. I got to do all these things. And I had the incredible privilege of letting him know the truth of Christ's substitutionary atonement, that he didn't just die and ri rise from the dead to help you. He died to save you and did all the work. And we got to have this wonderful conversation. And that's how I started going into the gospel. I didn't start with Romans 3.23 like it does in the bad news, good news. But Roman, but the bad news, good news also talks about the substitutionary atonement of Christ and how in the same way that we sit in a chair and it does all the work that when we trust in Christ, he does all the work for us. And when I'm able to share that with somebody, they're now they're now open to this new understanding of what it means to get to heaven. And now I can back into Christ did this for us. But here's why, because Romans 3.23 says we've all fallen short. And Romans 6, 23 tells us that there's a penalty for the, for this, and it's death. And I can go through this, this full gospel presentation to make sure he understands these elements. But because I have this method memorized, I can start anywhere that makes sense, best makes sense, to address this person. So highly recommend it. If you didn't get a chance to use the QR code for the bad news, good news, this is by far our, our best-selling um, pamphlet. Again, some people just memorize them and then use them as conversation guides and then hand them to people otherwise uh, when they're done uh, talking with them. That's how we recommend them. Um, other people, um, they'll talk to a waitress or a waiter for a little bit and include it with with a um, uh, with the receipt, leaving a good tip as well. That's important. <laughs> um, and then here's the QR code for uh, Crosstalk. Uh, if you didn't get a chance to to check to check that out, uh, they take you directly to the store. Like I said, you can just also just go to avantel.org in your own time and click store, and you'll find these there as well. Regardless of whether you're using one of these or your own method, just make sure the method number one describes the gospel in full, and and two that you have it memorized so that you can go anywhere you want in that method. All right. So last uh, last thing that we want to last couple things we want to talk about here is there's a full course of this this content. It's called reaching religious people. Uh, it goes much deeper than we've gone today. We do talk about keys and presenting the gospel, key things to think about when you're reaching other people from religion, uh, other religions. What things should I think about specifically that most other religions believe differently than Christianity? What are those specific things that are really important to mention whenever I'm sharing the gospel? We'll talk about that. We'll go into a deep dive of some of the things we talked about here, including um, some of the ways to ask questions. Uh, we'll talk about uh, we have full conversation guides. That's part of the downloadable resources you see as the last bullet there. Full conversation guides for um, talking with Mormons, Jehovah's Witnesses, Muslims, those who are brought up in a works based uh, other works based religion like Catholicism. Um, tips for common objections, not just answers to give. I see that so much. Here's the answer to give to this common objection. That's not always going to work, but there are tactics, kind of like we talked about today. There's ways to approach common objections. They're going to help you regardless of the objection. And we'll talk about some, some common answers as well, but it's more important to have a framework to work with then. So again, like we talked about at the beginning, you're going to be comfortable and confident going into the conversation. So when they, when they make an objection or ask a hard question, you're going to know exactly what to do. So I, I, if you go to avantel.org slash religious people, there's a form there you can fill out. When the course is launched later this year, we'll give you a, 25, a code for a 25% discount. In no way, shape, or form does filling out the form make you have to, pay, have to take the course or pay for the course. It makes the course $15 uh, with the 25% off, but you don't have to take the course. However, the only way you can get the discount code sent to you when the course launches later this year is to fill out the form on this page. So take advantage of that. 
uh, sign up to be notified when the course is launched and get that discount sent to you. And that way later, if you decide you do want to take the course, you get that discount. And if you don't, yeah, you don't have to. All right, we have just a, a couple, actually, we're technically out of time, but for at least a couple minutes, uh, I'll uh, answer any questions that, that you all may have. So if you have a question, feel free to, to type it in. And for those who, who can stay for a few minutes, um, I, I will try to answer uh, just a few questions. And for those who um, have to go, then I understand that. And if there is any question that you have that you just don't want to ask here or type in, you can feel free to email me at banderson at avantel.org. We I do this a lot after every webinar. We get a lot of questions emailed to us, and we will answer every single one. So take some time. I, I, I don't see any questions up here right now, and I understand that. Take some time, uh, because this is a deep issue. <laughs> uh, take some time to think through. If you know somebody and you're wondering, hey, thank you, good content. However, I still have a little bit of a question of how to engage this person. Great. Just just let me know and we'll answer it the best way that uh, that we can. Um, with that, I just encourage everybody to tune in in September. Uh, we have a uh, we have in Texas, we have North Texas Giving Day. But on September 22nd, we're really just having a celebration event of everything that God's been doing through, through Avantel and what's coming in the future. We'll send out invites for that. Um, just encourage you to, to join. It's not a training event at all. It's just a celebration. You want to see what God's been doing and, and evangelism throughout the North Texas area and beyond. Come check it out. There's some amazing stuff that, that God's been doing, and we got some great stuff we're looking forward to. So definitely encourage you to check it out. In October, we have Reaching Relatives in Today's Culture. That's going to be hosted by Dr. Larry Moyer and our president, David Souther. Super great content as we head into November and December when families start gathering around the table. How do I engage relatives, especially in today's culture, when conversations are harder than they ever have been? What are some great ways to engage relatives? So be looking for the invites for that. That'll be October's webinar. And lastly, just always invite everybody to come check us out at avantel.org. We are producing so much great content every single month. Lots of, of articles, lots of videos on our YouTube channel that are also on our website. Lots of great resources that we have there for you to take advantage of. Um, check it out and take advantage of that and, and just get equipped and prepared to share the gospel in a winsome way and get excited. Share, there's nothing better than seeing somebody move from death to life. And I want you to be a part of that. If that's, if that's something you're not actively doing, just see what God does when you begin actively pursuing others for him and using some of the resources we have. I'm, I'm going to end up getting emotional. So with that, I'm going to um, uh, end today's webinar. Thank you all for joining. Please email me with any questions you have at banderson at avantel.org. And I'd love to get to as many as, uh, as I'm able to. I'll, I'll get to them all via email. And so thank you all for your time today. I hope you all have a great, wonderful rest of the week.